Good day, my scholars. This is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Right here, what we're doing together is we will be solving questions and examples in the topic laws of indices and indices itself as a whole. So we are going to examine the laws attached with indices, the examples, the possible questions that you can encounter in several kinds of exams that you'll be writing. So all you just need to do is to sit back, relax and enjoy as we move into the session of the topic indices. Welcome back to your favorite educational channel and that is my school YouTube channel. So right here we are welcome to the short video session of the topic indices. So remember I said we'll be looking into the laws attached, the examples and possible questions that you may encounter. So join me as we start with the topic indices. So at first you may be asked what is indices? So indices is a plural form to index. Okay, you can say index, you can say power, you can say exponent. So what does that mean? It means that you have raised a number to a certain value. Okay, or you have raised a letter to a certain value. For instance, if I say this to... Hmm, so the index here is 3, or I can say the power here is 3. Okay, or I can say the exponent here is 3. That tells us that 2 has been multiplied to itself 3 times. Okay, so this as indices, all this put together is described under indices. Okay, it tells you that oh, a certain value or a certain number has been raised to a certain amount or it has been multiplied to itself certain amount of time. Okay, so this is what we are looking at. So the number we have here is referred to as the base. Okay, this is the base. And what is written to the right hand side, okay, the upper right, right hand side is referred to as the index the exponent or the power, all right? So we can say two raised to the power of three, all right? So this is what indices entail. So what we're doing together now is we're going to examine some of the laws that are attached to indices or the laws we can find in indices, okay? So these are just some of them. We still have much more to deal with in the fuller video. All you just need to do is to subscribe. So let's start with each of the laws that we have here. Okay, so you can see the first law, m raised to power 2 times m raised to power 3. Okay, this tells you that m raised to power 2 plus 3. Okay, and that is equals, that equals m raised to power 5. Okay, that means the times we have here, you can see that even the base here is the same. The bases are the same, right? So that tells you that these times become plus, and that is m raised to power 5. Okay, of course, there are conditions that we should consider when we are trying to apply this law. Okay, so as we go into the fuller video, I'll be sharing some of those laws that are attached to the application of these rules. Okay, so you can see these times will become plus. So if times become plus, that means divide will turn towards minus. Okay, you can see this in another light like this. That tells us m raised to power 2 means m times m, right? Then we now have times m raised to power 3 means m times m times m, isn't it? So how many m's do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. m raised to power 5. So instead of going this long route, we can just do this and we arrive at the answer. So let's, let's move to the second law. The law, the second law we have here is y raised to power 5 divides y raised to power 2. Okay, that means divide return to minus. So here we have y raised to power 5 minus 2. Remember the base are the same, so I just pick 1. So that tells me y raised to power 3. Okay, we can see this now, that lights. You know, we can say y raised to power 5 means y times y times y times y times y. Okay, let me write this so that we can see it better. Okay, so let's do it. y times y times y times y times y. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divided by y raised to power 2, right? y times y. So let's strike out. We have this. How many y do we have left? 1, 2, 3. 
So, in the stead of going through this long method, we'll just say y raised to the power 5, the vice change to minus, right? y raised to the power 5 minus 2, and that gives us y raised to the power 3. So that is the second law. So let's go on to the third law. So the third law we have s raised to the power 4, okay, close brackets, everything raised to the power 2. This is simply s raised to the power 4 times 2, and that gives you s raised to the power 8. So this is, you just multiply the power that we have here, then the power outside the brackets, okay? So it's just another way of we saying, for us saying this, okay, this means s raised to the power 4 in two, in two places times s raised to the power 4, isn't it? Remember that times we change to plus, so that will be s raised to the power 4 plus 4, and that gives us s raised to the power 8. Or you can still put it in this light, Okay, so that will be s raised to the power 4, okay? Or any whichever we want to do it, or you want to bring this, you can even bring this here and still send it out, okay? So it's still the same thing. So 4 times 2, basically, will just give you x raised to the power 8. I'm trying to cut this short so that I won't complicate the simple steps we are trying to use for now, okay? As we go into the longer or the fuller version of this topic, okay, I'm going to show you some of the other methods that we can use that we can implement when tackling questions like this so i'm going to be doing that using some of the examples that we have slated here okay so these examples are reserved for us okay as we subscribe for active subscription for the full video okay so we know this is s raised to power eight so let's go to the next law okay this is the zero index so provided that the base here is not zero Okay, I just shared the condition with you. Provided that the base here is not zero, any letter or number raised to power zero is one. So if I have a thousand raised to power zero, it is one. If I have 0 0.1 raised to power zero, that is still one, okay? So even if I have 30 million raised to power zero, that is still equals to one. So C raised to power zero is one under the condition that C is not equals to zero, okay? So then we have this law, the negative index. So if the power you are having is having a negative value, what that tells you, this will now mean, this minus means one over h raised to power two. Very easy, you can see it. So the minus here means one over h raised to power two. Okay, so this is another law that we are going to need. All right, so let's go to the fifth one that we have here. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, five. So this is the sixth law that we are going to examine in this short video. So you can see this, all right? We have in the index, we have in the index as a fraction. So this is a fractional index, all right? So what do we do? Remember that this is numerator, this is denominator. So the index, comprises of a fraction. So this is numerator and denominator. So always remember that the denominator will form the square roots and the numerator will now form the total or the overall index or power. This is what I mean. The denominator, which is five, will form the root. So this is what I'm going to have. That will be the fifth root of L, isn't it? Then raised to power three. Okay, so let me assume that L is giving us 32, okay, let's say L is 32, for instance, all right, so I will, I'm going to find the fifth root of 32, whatever answer I now get, I will now raise it to the power of 3, okay, so that would be, the fifth root of 32 means, what number will I multiply to itself five times that will give me 32, okay, that is 2, okay, how do I know that, 2 times 2, I have 4, times 2, I have 8, times 2, I have 16, times 2, I have 32. So that's number that I can raise to 5, to the power of 5, and will give me 32 is 2. Alright, so the fifth root of 32 is 2, then raised to power 3, that is 8. Right? Because uh, 2 raised to power 3 is 2 times 2 times 2, 2 in 3 places, and that gives us 8. Okay, so let's go to the last rule that we have reserved for this particular video segment. So we can see this, that we have n raised to power 2 equals g. 
Okay, so to eliminate this power, what do you do? You square root both sides. Okay, both sides will now be n raised to the power 2 equals this. Alright, we square root this, we square root this. So the square will cancel the square root. So what I have left is n equals the square root of g. Okay, so you can see this. So you can see that the square is being nullified by the square root. So for us to eliminate the square, you just have to introduce the square root. If I have 3 here, what I'll be looking for now, or what I'll be using on both sides, will now be cube root. Okay? If I have 4, that will be the fourth root. Alright, do you see that? So we have other laws that I'm going to introduce in the fuller video. All you just need to do is to hit the like button, click on the subscribe button and also tap on bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we put up the next videos just for you. So please do not forget, click on that description, it's going to take you to the My School website. There you are going to get how you can take part in the active subscription. See you in the full video.